So this is the latest version as of April 2017 version of the SACA, the self-advancing knee ascender. And I've had a couple questions, so I'm going to address those questions. But then before I do, I'll just talk a little bit about the, uh, the SACA and where it is right now. I have my own special ascender that's made. We're going to talk about that and why it's important in the construction of the SACA. But notice that the ascender is bolted securely. It's not only bolted, it's also strapped. But it's bolted securely to the body of the SACA. This is important because you don't want any movement. You don't want any lateral movement, sideways movement. You want it to be able to stay perfectly straight with the rope. Also something that we're going to demonstrate. It comes with a Dyneema bungee. It comes with its own carabiners. It comes with its own foot loop. It comes with everything you need for the knee ascender. The foot loop comes in three different sizes, although the regular size fits almost everyone. If you're a child or you wear uh, women's very small boots, there's a small size foot loop. If you use chainsaw boots a lot, then there's a large size foot loop. Even if you have like a size 10, uh, that may work with the chainsaw boots. But anyway, so there's three foot loops and the, like I said, the regular fits almost everyone. The bungee is adjustable. I like to have it set so that I can get a regular size step out of the bungee that I've got and then attach this low on my harness someplace. But there is extra bungee in here, so if you're a person that wants to attach it high, like at the chest harness, you can simply adjust the length of that bungee, and now you're set for being one of these guys that likes to attach it high on your harness, or high on the chest harness. So there's two options, and it's and it is very easy to to set that. If you'll also notice, there's small washers right here. If you're manipulating or doing something, don't lose those washers. Those small washers prevent the bungee or that knot from ever being able to be pulled up into the uh, tubing. So they're, they're on there. Um, very easy to adjust it back down to uh, regular size right there and I'm right back down to attaching this to my saddle. Alright, I want to talk a little bit about the ascenders and this gets into the questions that I've had or the comments. Guys are getting really fast with these things and I think there's going to be some records when it comes to uh, rope rocking and in the competitions. But as guys get faster and faster, uh, the technique becomes extremely important. Let me talk about the ascenders, because I've gone through so many ascenders trying to get everything just exactly right for the Sokka. Notice, this is a camp turbo foot. Notice the teeth pattern on this. They're fairly aggressive. They're not real long or real sharp teeth, but they're very inclined, making it fairly aggressive. And you would think that that engages very well on the rope. And I'm going to demonstrate with this ascender right now why we get some slip. But even with this that's fairly aggressive, it's just with the spring tension and the design of these teeth that we get a lot of slip off of this ascender. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this more. But right now I just want to demonstrate that this engages fairly well. But notice if the angle comes off at all, it starts to slip. That's a really critical angle, and this camp highlighted that critical angle for me, and I found that it just, it didn't work. I mean, even if it gets just slightly off, it'll start to slip. That's part of the design of a foot ascender. That's about the only reason that you have a left and a right foot ascender. Otherwise, it doesn't make any difference when your feet are going straight up and down the road. But in a foot ascender, if you point your toe forward, in other words, this would be the heel 
of the foot ascender. Any, any foot ascender in its design is going to have the back part is that rounded, that rounded part. If you point your toe forward, it has a chance of engaging more. That only applies really to the foot ascender, not so much to the knee ascender. Uh, not that you can't do that with a knee ascender, and that's what we're addressing some of these issues with as far as what kind of a, what kind of a position that knee ascender needs to find itself in. Here's a Petzl uh, chest ascender. But notice the teeth on this, also very aggressive, very sharp, probably works really well for mountaineers that are going up an icy rope in snowy, icy conditions. But they also tend, if they're not managed very well, to pick the rope a little bit. So that's a very aggressive uh, tooth configuration. Here's the CT uh, foot ascender. It also has fairly aggressive teeth, not quite as long as the Petzl, but still fairly aggressive. Works well for uh, a foot ascender. This is a CMI foot ascender. Notice the configuration on this is very rope friendly. Uh, teeth are not very sharp, but it does engage well. Uh, it was, I thought, a very good foot ascender. Uh, and, you know, it's built like a brick. You'll never, you'll never break this or wear it out. But the point is, the teeth on this are not very aggressive uh, and very rope friendly. It's a good ascender. It was just too heavy for anything I could use. So, so I like that thought. And when I was designing um, a foot ascender, I wanted a cam such as that. So this is one of my original cams. I just found, notice I, I did a little modification to try to change the angle and stuff. But I found that it was starting to slip on the rope. And again, mostly on a Kern Master, any tightly braided rope, it would start to slip. So what we've done with the Saka, and again, it's designed for the knee ascender and for a foot ascender. But notice on the Saka, the teeth have an incline to the cam at this half that's quite aggressive. And then, and this is primarily so that it makes sure that the, the rope is engaged. Then lower down on the cam, they're more perpendicular. So you can see that they're more perpendicular and less aggressive at the lower part of the cam where the rope would already be engaged. In other words, this is where they're more aggressive, and so that's where... That's where the rope will be engaged. Once that rope gets engaged, then it's held with the less aggressive teeth. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the foot ascender. The foot ascender, again, if you tip, step forward just slightly, it tends to help the engagement of the cams. If you step backwards, it in, tends to want to make a uh, foot ascender slip. This is really the only reason you've got a left and a right in a foot ascender. If you keep your feet perpendicular to the rope, in other words, this is completely lined up, then it's not an issue. You can wear a foot ascender on either foot and still get the same amount of effectiveness. When it comes to, when it comes to the knee ascender, it's really important that this knee ascender, the body of the knee ascender, when you go up a rope, it stays in line with the rope. Now the interesting thing is, when you take a step with the knee ascender, whenever you do that, you're going to be stepping on a tight rope, a taut rope, a rope that already has some weight on it. When you step down with a foot ascender, you're stepping down on a piece of rope that has no weight on it. There, there is a difference. And whenever a rope gets tight like this, it means that the angle of this becomes increasingly important. 
as guys have gotten to be really fast, some have reported that they're getting slippage on their knee ascender. And that's part of the reason is because this becomes tight and slippage is more likely to happen. So what's important is that when you take a step, and this addresses technique completely uh, about technique, and that your feet need to go directly straight up and down the rope. The faster you go, the harder it's going to get. So addressing that, it's, this is something we learned when we were like 11 months old or a year old. When we learned to walk, we learned to use our feet for balance. You can't help it. If you start to tip over, if you're climbing in the tree, your feet are going everywhere to keep your body upright. When you get on a rope, it's completely different. And it's almost impossible to throw everything away that you've been doing since you learned to walk. But when you're going up a rope, your feet need to be just for propulsion. That's all they are, is just for propulsion straight up then down the rope. When you start to use your feet for balance, then next thing you know, your feet are going all different directions. If, if your feet are coming out to the side like this, what that can do is it can make your knee ascender bind up a little bit. And so if that's off, if your feet are off to this side and that bungee starts to stretch out, when your feet do line up, guess what happens? We don't like that. It doesn't feel good. Nobody likes it. it. doesn't feel good. So it's really important that this remains lined up with the rope, not off to the side, not this way or that way, and that's the way you'll get the best engagement. I'm going to demonstrate this. And I do it as fast as I possibly can with my hand. And I think my hand is probably going to be faster than most people can do it with their feet. But I'm going to go up this as fast as I can and change directions as quickly as I can. do that all day long and never see any slip but notice I'm always lined up with the rope and it has tension in it that's the way it's going to be when you're climbing now the other thing that is really important with a knee ascender and we're going to demonstrate this is how quickly this rebounds because you want this thing to keep up with your feet some of you got really fast feet and so the knee ascender itself has to keep up so, all right, so there I've got it set for a step, and I don't know if anybody can move their feet this fast, but this is how fast the socket will go up the rope. This is a question that also comes up quite often, is what dictates the stride? of a rope walker and I don't have my boot in here but if my boot was here and my boot was over here obviously the amount of stride I can get is dictated by the top of the foot ascender and the bottom of the knee ascender this is this is my stride now you can take a bigger step with one foot and a, than a regular stride with your other foot but, or a regular step with the other foot but I don't consider that a stride a stride is equal steps so that stride, when I go up, it hits up the top. That's, that's one step, and then I take another step, and another step. That is a stride. And the Saka is designed for a pretty moderate uh, stride, one that you would probably have as you are going up steps. If you want to get a bigger stride than that, say in a competition, there are ways that we can lengthen the distance between this ascender and your foot. One other thing that we've gotten right, I think, with the Saka is the spring tension. With this camp, the really very light spring tension, and I think the intent, um, and this is for their foot ascender, so I'm not criticizing camp or anything. If it works for their foot ascender, great. But there's very light spring tension on that. And I think what they were after is to get minimal amount of friction. 
Well, there's a real issue between having too light of a spring tension and having too much spring tension. If there's too much spring tension, then it adds to the drag going up. If it's too light, then it tends to slip a little bit. The Saka, we seem to have gotten a really good spring tension, one that allows the rope to pass very fast, very quickly, but yet still impo uh, engages positively. So we're going to go outside and we're going to test this spring tension and we're going to do a little launch and see how far we can get this thing to go up a rope. And anybody else that has a knee ascender or something, your good little fun little test one day is just shoot it up a rope that has some tension and see how far it goes. So. Did I miss anything? Anything else I should say? I have no idea. <laughs> One of the things that we learned when we were 11 years old, or however we, old we were when we learned to walk? 11 what? month. 11 month? Month? Is that Not 11 it? year. Oh, 11 years. <clears throat> <laughs> so now i got to cut that out. Um,